Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. Let's jump right to it with our guest today. The first question, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Well, I'm James Tiley. I am uh, about 25 years into a dual career of both radio, where there's no money, and uh, financial technology, where there's plenty of money. <laughs> so I decided to take it upon myself to integrate the two and uh, left Wall Street, moved down to Georgia, got out of New York entirely, and uh, been on my own now for about, not on my own, but my own company now for about officially 10 years. Wow, fantastic. Congratulations. You're obviously you. doing some very creative things. That's great. It's question, very number two, question number two, what's the best thing about working with a team? Uh, well, with my team, I would say the best thing is, is that we have so many different facets. You know, we've got radio DJs, on-air coordinators. They all know music and marketing and fun. And then we also have the finance guys who understand accounting and uh, regulatory environments for royalties. And um, a lot of social media people also. So it's funny when the finance guy is a big Aerosmith fan and he wants to talk to the on-air coordinator, right? There's always that bond. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. That makes so a lot of sense. Yeah, that's one of the best. Oh, that, that's it. I like that a lot. I like how you're, you're blending in the fun with the work, if you want to call right. it work. <laughs> well, that's great. Question number three, I hear from other leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to get team members engaged. Tell me your thoughts. It's like the same scenario, right? When, he, when somebody who's responsible for paying royalties to artists find out that that particular artist is one of their favorites, they want to know where the concert is, right? Half the time, the uh, social media people are like, well, when are we tuning in? Right? They're going to tune in just like a regular listener. And then when it comes to money, you know, DJs are like, hey, when's the uh, payments going through? So we do have that constant flow of, of uh, getting along, right? Well, that's great. I like how everybody is getting along on an ongoing basis. That helps a lot. Question number four, what other piece of advice do you have for leaders of teams? Um, I think the advice that I typically give, because uh, I do meet with others, uh, tends to be appreciation. Mm -hmm. Um how to manage without micromanaging, but you still want to keep control, right? It's like a respectful version of non-micromanagement while paying attention. Um, and I think a lot of leaders tend to always look for what they should be doing and not necessarily paying attention to what should be done. And, and what I mean by that is in my scenario, you might be really into rap music. So why are we going to go push a major rock venue in front of those that target audience, right? You have to know what they want and that's what you should be doing, not what you think the audience wants to hear. So listening carefully to, yeah, but, um, I like that because it's, uh, it's a general principle as well. And I've liked how you've applied it to your business. But yeah, we have to not always assume that we know what's best for the customer or the listener or the patient or whatever, but try and listen to what they're interested in. And that, that, that listening is such a critical element of effective teamwork and in this case, leadership and, and so on and so forth. So thank you so much for sharing that. That was a great comment. Question number five, what other successful leaders of teams would you like to recognize that have had a positive influence in your life? Now, I got this question early from you and I thought about it and it's, it's a loaded question. <laughs> so again, radio and Wall Street, the, the two are incredible when you figure out how to put them together uh, based on the company that we, that we have now. But when I started off really young, my first financial type gig, right, was with Jordan Belford at Oakmont Stratton, which a lot of people know is the Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and for all that you know and all that you hear about him, 
there is plenty of learning what to do and what not to do, right? I'm not going to take away from the experience because that was the main that gave me the opportunity to understand IPOs, profit and losses, what a, what a stock split was, right? Or dividends, over-the-counter pink sheets, all this Wall Street stuff. I had no idea. I was 24 years old, right? Well, you know, and he pitched it to us as money. You're going to make a lot of money. You're young. You're going to be good, right? But you, you live and learn. And then for many reasons, we all got out. I wound up going to Bloomberg. And I worked directly with Mike Bloomberg well before he was into politics. I kind of helped him get a little bit in the mayor. I was on his campaign for mayor. But I worked for him directly. And um, no matter what you think of him currently, I, I will tell you that 20 years ago, this guy... So I'm in a wheelchair, and I don't know if people can tell, but I'm, I'm in a wheelchair. I would, um, I would drive to the railroad, get on the train, go into Manhattan, get out of the train station, get on a bus, take the bus up to 499 Park Avenue. At any given moment, a train could show up at a non-wheelchair accessible track, which meant Penn Station had to do something special just for me, which took a half an hour, easy. Then I would get on the bus if the bus didn't break down, and then get on that bus that didn't break down to get to 499 Park Avenue, assuming that there's no accidents or traffic. Mm -hmm. Got to the point, and I was, so Mike had an open relationship. You would sit right next to him. Didn't matter who you were. He was one of you guys. You were all one. I came in, I, I had progressed greatly. I, I, some people, sometimes I believe that I went too far too fast at Bloomberg. By the time I was in my 30s, I was executive. And, um, but at one point in time, when I was younger, I was like 28, 29, I came in and I, and I was respond, I was a team lead for the algorithmic sell side trading platform. And uh, I came in, I was a mess, I was hot, I was sweaty. It was 10 o'clock in the morning, the market opens at nine. I get in there and I, I go, Mike, I can't do this. As I'm not creating any value for you by showing up an hour and a half late. And I, and I am annoyed. I'm angry. My brain is not where it's supposed to be from all of this. I go, I mean, if I could drive in every day with my own car, I would. But that's, you know, $1,000 a month just to go to your job. So I said, I, I'm going to let you down. And I don't want to be the guy who lets you down. I think I have to quit. Michael Bloomberg looked at me and he went, Really? Are you sure? You know, and I was like rocking back, but well, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, he picked up the phone, he called HR and he goes, get James Tiley and Amex card. And I went, oh, what are you doing over here? He goes, you take the Amex card. You have a limitless supply of gasoline for your car. You're gonna get a monthly garage permit right across the street and you put it all on the card. I don't wanna hear another thing. And, Boy, did I get spoiled after that. Um, and, but what Mike was saying to me at that time really didn't even have anything to do with being in a wheelchair or, or equal opportunity or anything like that. That was a leader telling me, I see your value and I'm not going to let you discredit yourself. So, you know, I can't go giving you a raise, just, you know, because your coworkers are going to go, hey, how do you? But I am willing to spend an Amex card if it means keeping you here. This is all passively said by that action. And that, uh, he eventually left his own firm, became mayor, uh, which was a lot of fun. And the fun fact about staying in radio was I was this computer geek working on algorithmic high frequency trading. And if you know Bloomberg Radio, I used to swing by the newsrooms and be like, hey guys, can I still do the news and weather and traffic on the eights? And they're like, yeah. Come on in, here's the board, you know how to touch it. So again, even early on, because we were a lot, the fact that Mike would get mad, be like, I heard you on AM radio, you should be out swapping out flat panels. <laughs> the, uh, the idea was there that if you're not having fun in your career, you need to stop and, and there's so many ways to get around the stress mm -hmm. that if you try to have fun, you might actually pull it off. 
Wow, what great pieces of advice. And thank you for sharing that story about Mike Bloomberg. That is a great story and speaks very well, not just of him as an individual, but as a leader. And so thank you so much for sharing that story. Last question, tell us about your first job. Burger King and the same type, you know, now that I think about it in hindsight, my friend got the job at Burger King in high school. We were 15. And he was like, dude, these people are paying us like four bucks an hour. You know, I was like, I'm in. So I show up in the wheelchair and uh, my, his name, I know him to this day. My son even met him, you know, I was grown up. His name is Nick Carisi. I might as well give him a shout out. He, uh, he was managing, he still owns the Burger King to this day. I go in there and I'm like, hey, you know, is there anything I can do? And he grabbed the front of the wheelchair, you know, where like the feet rests are. I got fancy support wheelchairs, you know, he grabs the wheelchair. And he goes, pull away from me. So I, I pulled him out of the chair because when you're, when you're in a wheelchair, your upper body is not the issue. And he said to me, he goes, I'm not going to treat you special. You're going to mop the floors. You're going to do the parking lot. And you're going to clean all the tables. And people, the customers, used to come in and go, oh, my goodness. Look at that kid in the wheelchair mopping. And they would hand me, like, dollar bills and tips. <laughs> like, your boss must be evil. Nobody knew that I had created the perfect example of using the mop in the bucket as like um, skiing. I'm, I'm rowing a boat with the mop in the bucket, mopping the floor. I had less effort than somebody standing up mopping the floor. That's a good point. That's that was a good first, point. And, and that, I figured that out on my own at the age of 15. I was going to get a job I wanted to get. That is such a great story. Thank you for sharing that because I love the ingenuity. I love the, I'm not going to let this beat me type of an attitude. I'm going to find a solution and I'm going to find a way to even do it better than the other person might do it. I think that's great. James, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. How can people find you? Probably the easiest way is to go to our website, which is dlpro.org. Stands for Distributed Ledger Performance Rights Organization. We're actually creating a blockchain technology for performance rights, like ASCAP and BMI, if you know, if you know these names, so that we are rewarding the artists for their appropriate performances without requiring auditing or, um, trans, you know, there's a lot of transparency involved. It's working out great. So I'm over at dlpro.org. And uh, I'm also on the radio. I made that a rule. If I'm going to do finance, I have a Saturday night rock show and a Wednesday night rock show on cyberfmradio.com, which we own because our proof of concept is radio broadcast. So you get me on Cyber FM Radio or DL Pro, you can Google them. My name is Mike Bloomberg taught me to make sure your name is on everything down to the napkins. You'll find my name. That's great. Thank you so much. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com, and you can download our Engagement Booster Tip Sheet. We'll give you some ideas on how to boost engagement from the hire all the way to the time when you have to part ways with the company, or with the employee, I should say. And once again, that is teamengagementpodcast.com. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day.